Hey, it's Pastor Jared, and I just want to take a few moments to encourage you today. Uh, you may be like the two fellows overheard one time. One looked at the other. They were both discouraged and said, you know, uh, what I need is a, is a blessing that's not in disguise. And maybe that's kind of your feeling today. With everything that's going on, it would be easy to begin to feel that way. And um, I just want to encourage you uh, and let you know that uh, you are cared for. Uh, I spent uh, some time today um, praying over names of people that are part of our church family. So went through all the names that we had, and prayed also at the end for some names that uh, that may have been inadvertently missed on the list or something. But you've been prayed for by name today. I'm lifting up my church family uh, to the Lord in prayer and many others as well during this time. And, officials and medical personnel all those kinds of things and so know that you've been prayed for that you're cared about if you need anything you can contact our church and we'll do our best to to minister to you but i want to want to offer to you that during this time that you can be blessed you can and uh, i would encourage you to take care of yourself physically you know your physical well-being your emotional and intellectual well-being and your spiritual well-being they are connected you're not three different components of you that are apart from one another, but they are connected to one another. And so if you're getting some exercise, you're getting up moving around, you're engaging your mind and, and, uh, and taking time uh, with the Lord who will give us our daily bread, who leads us beside still waters, who, who restores our soul. Uh, those things are going to be important uh, as, you, as you continue to walk through uh, the events going on right now. First uh, Kings chapter 19 uh, recounts uh, something that happened to Elijah that I think is notable and I wanted to share with you today. Uh, Elijah was a part really of, a, of, a, of a, a spiritual movement that he had been working for the Lord and seeking God and, and obeying the Lord and everything and was wanting to see revival really break out in Israel. Uh, the king and queen of Israel were Ahab and Jezebel, and they were wicked, and they had introduced worship of false gods and lots of other things. And, and Elijah was uh, working diligently in obedience to the Lord. To He wanted to see the hearts and minds of people turn back to God. And it looked like through miraculous means and through the obedience of Elijah and the, and the power of God that that, uh, that was starting to happen. The tide was turning toward revival. And uh, and. And Elijah gets a messenger from Jezebel who says to him, in essence, uh, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be dead. I'm going to kill you. And after everything that Elijah had been through, the miraculous things that God had done in his life and protected him and provided for him and all those kinds of, you would think that Elijah would again, rise up and say something like, well, bring it on Jezebel. It's to your own risk that you try to do something to me because I'm doing what God want me, wants me to do and I'm going to obey him. And, and uh, but this time is different. He doesn't do that. He's actually gripped with fear. And when, as fear grips him, he's, he, uh, he acts on that fear and he heads out of town and he goes on the run. And while he's, he's running, he, he comes to the place where he's just physically exhausted. He's got no food that he's taken with him. And so he's hungry. He's physically exhausted. He's probably mentally exhausted. The weight, uh, responsibility of all that he has been doing and leading and providing, um, uh, and providing uh, guidance to the people and all the things that he's doing is just weighing him down and, and uh, I think we could all understand that. And he gets to the place where he just kind of falls on the ground and, and he begins to recount all that's going on in his life. He's, you know, God, nobody is worshiping you. I feel like a failure. Uh, the other prophets of God have, have been killed. Some have, you know, abandoned you. And I'm the only one left. I'm the only faithful person. I'm all by myself. And, uh, and now people want to kill me too. And so just take me now. Just, I'm done. And God comes and uh, sends an angel to uh, feed him. He's got food and he gets some rest. And then Elijah gets up and goes a little farther and comes to a more mountainous area and comes to this, this kind of rocky mountainside and goes into a cave. And when he gets there, as God's led him there, all of a sudden there's the earth is shaking, the wind's blowing, there's fire, there's all these 
I mean, it would be a sight to be seen. I mean, rocks are busting from the wind. I mean, this is, this is, this is a powerful, maybe illustration of the strength and ability of God in all this. And this is all taking place. And Elijah, who's already afraid, he's already discouraged. He's already probably more afraid. But then it says that he heard a voice like a soft whisper. Some translations say a still small voice. When he heard that, he took the cloak that he had on and he wrapped it up around his face and he walked out of the cave, kind of to the mouth of the cave. And he began to recount again all the bad stuff that had been going on. Uh, uh, the, the, you know, nobody was serving the Lord. Nobody's listening to him. The other prophets have abandoned or, you know, other people have abandoned God. The prophets have been killed, the true prophets. And now I'm the only one and they're trying to kill me too. And all, in all of that that happens, it's interesting that God's response to Elijah is different than we might assume that it would be. Because at, at first read, it was like, well, that's not comforting, but maybe it is. So here's God's response to Elijah is not to come around Elijah, put his arm around him and say, Elijah, it's okay. You're all right. Uh, I'm here. I'm with you. You'll get through this. He's not saying, you got this, Elijah. It's all right. I'm here. I'm present. I've not abandoned you. All those things would, would certainly be all right and maybe even indicative of God. After all, the Holy Spirit's called the comforter. But God does something different. God, instead of comforting him in that way, he comforts him in a, in a different way. He gives Elijah a to-do list. It's almost like after Elijah recounts all the bad stuff that's happened, he's discouraged and he's about to give up himself and he's frustrated and he's depressed and he's worn out. And, and God says, all right, Elijah, go back, go back where you ran from. And I want you to do some things. I want you to anoint the king of Israel, a new king. I want you to anoint your successor, uh, Elisha, who will take over as prophet after you, Elijah. And I want you, and he gives him this, this to-do list. Here's what I want you to do. And at first read, I think, that, that's not comforting. How is that comforting? How is that positive? And then there's very little of the conversation, maybe, because Elijah does exactly what God calls him to do. He goes back and he gets back in it. He's, he's uh, anointing the people. He's doing the things that God told him to do. But I think maybe that's where the comfort lies. See, there's, as a Christian, uh, there's no better place to be than fulfilling the call of God. And during times of crisis and times of difficulty and times of trial, frustration, discouragement, that's no time to say, well, my call, I'm going to hang on the wall here. I'm going to sit back on the corner for a minute. That No, 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 no. God's saying the way that I'm going to come for you is that my blessings are going to flow through you to the rest of the world. Your calling still stands. What I want you to do and what I want you to be, how I want you to treat people, it doesn't go away. It still stands. I'm still calling you to those things. You say, well, what are you, what, 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 what's God calling us to right now? Well, maybe he's calling us to the same thing he's always called us to. You're familiar with... Uh, the golden rule, even people who aren't Christians know Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Well, right there you have a calling. So in the moments where you fear, feel fear creeping in to your mind and to your heart, is the moment to say, what would I like for someone to do for me right now? And once you think of that, then do it for someone else. You say, well, nobody's called me. I sure could use a friend right now to give me a call. I sure could use a, someone to call me up and provide a little encouragement. Then do that for someone. Maybe the still small voice of God is whispering to you right now, I'm still wanting to use you. And maybe now in greater ways than you've ever been used before. Uh, in staff meeting uh, a week ago, uh, my wife shared with uh, with our staff the uh, some some scripture from Philippians and uh, noted that Paul had written that letter to the church at Philippi while he was in prison. 
Now, if you read it from that in that context, it it, it begins to have life to it more so maybe. And uh, I get thinking about that. And you know, all the churches that Paul started, he was one of the first missionary, all the churches that he started today no longer exist. Those local churches don't exist. But we still have the letters that Paul wrote. 2,000 years later, we have the letter. And those letters, this letter like Philippians is still impacting people today. The greatest thing, the most lasting thing that Paul ever participated in, that he ever did, was a time when he was in prison, when he was bound by chains, when he was not able to go anywhere, he was not able to do anything. He was chained up. He was in prison. And there, instead of sitting around, feeling sorry for himself, counting up all the things that have gone wrong in his life and how people have stoned him and people have rejected him and people have imprisoned him and people talk bad about him and all the bad things that have gone wrong in his life, he started saying, how can I continue to glorify God? How can I continue to bring praise to God? And God used him as he penned that letter. God's spirit flowed through him. And what I, I want to encourage you today, not to be counting all the bad things right now. You can watch that on on the news and you can watch that on social media but right now spend some time listening to the still small voice of God that is calling to you and is calling you to be part of what he is doing right now in these moments and we might just be on the brink of revival if God's people would rise up and continue to listen to the soft whisper of God calling us into the fray of the chaos and the disappointment and the discouragement and raising up Jesus and saying, I'm going to be what God's called me to be. I'm going to do what God's called me to do even now. So I would encourage you to get your phone out, make a phone call. Let somebody know that you've been thinking about them, that you care about them, that you love them. Let them know that they're important and that let them know what you appreciate about them. Uh, maybe write a write a note, write a letter to somebody and just let them know, I appreciate you. Send a text, send an email. Uh, maybe, maybe buy a gift online and send it to them. Uh, maybe put some money. Say, I'm struggling financially. Well, maybe put some money in an envelope and send it to somebody. I don't know how these things work. I just know God works through them. And as you allow yourself to be a blessing to someone else, you'll find that God blesses you in the meantime. If you go searching for a blessing, you might miss a blessing. But if you go seeking to give that blessing, you might receive that blessing. So I want to encourage you today, listen to the still small voice of God and allow him to guide you and direct you in what he has for you today. I'm Pastor Jared. I'm praying for you, and I know that God's going to see you through.